What is good, Internet? I am the Angry Philosopher on Drugs, coming off yet again another fantastic Twitter conversation that has inspired me to get off my ass by getting onto my ass and making a video about something I've been wanting to do for a little while. This is not a rant about any particular public issue. This is a... Uh, well, we'll call it a pod explains, and I want to go right back to the very basics of logic. So I'm um, my main passion is the various fields of analytic philosophy. So that is logic, metaphysics, epistemology, stuff like that. Um, and the most basic tool we use in that field is called a syllogism. It's a sort of a formal way of structuring an argument. So I want to go through the different types of syllogisms so that we sort of have the tools to analyze stupid people's arguments uh, and smart people's arguments too, to be honest. But if you're going to know where an argument fails, it helps to be able to put it down into a structured form and go, oh, there's your problem. That premise is bonkers. So I'm going to start with, I'm going to be sort of stealing from partially from one of my old philosophy lectures, just because he found the most random ways to explain stuff well. Uh, and the first syllogism goes something like this. Uh, if the moon is made of cheese, then Bugs Bunny is a tortoise. That's the first premise. Second premise. <laughs> Let's go with Brie Larson is the best thing that ever happened to the MCU. Conclusion, uh, Bugs Bunny is a tortoise. So, how is that messed up? Let us count the ways. Firstly, both premises, I mean, I'm sure there are some people who want to argue this one, but they're stupid. There is no relationship to the moon being made of cheese and the animal status of Bugs Bunny. Brie Larson is certainly not the best thing that ever happened to the MCU. That's clearly Robert Downey Jr. And the conclusion, um, Bugs Bunny is not a tortoise. Actually, no, the conclusion should be something completely different, like uh, cars are made of salt or something. Because the conclusion has nothing to... The premises are not true, and the conclusion has nothing to do with them. That is an argument. It's still an argument, because it's two premises and a conclusion. It's not a valid argument because the conclusion has nothing to do with the premises. Even if the moon was made of cheese, and it will, even if it was true that if the moon is made of cheese, then Bugs Bunny would become a tortoise. The things you say on YouTube, and even if it was true that Brie Larson was the best thing to ever happen to the MCU, it still would not logically follow that cars are made out of salt. So it's an argument, it's just not a valid one. Now, let's go back to the initial one that I, uh, I used. Let's go with, um, okay, so let's, let's do a uh, valid argument. A valid argument might go, if the moon is made of cheese, then Bugs Bunny is a tortoise. The moon is made of cheese, that's the second premise, which is more believable than the previous second premise. Moving on, Bugs Bunny therefore is a tortoise. That's a valid argument because if it is true that if the moon is made out of cheese, then Bugs Bunny is a tortoise, and it is true that the moon is made out of cheese, then it must logically follow that Bugs Bunny is a tortoise. So it is a valid argument. What it is not is a sound argument because the premises are bullshit, and they're obviously bullshit. We've been to the moon. It's not made of cheese. Sorry, Wallace and Gromit. And Bugs Bunny is certainly not a tortoise. So it's a valid argument, but it's not a sound one. And the reason for this being an important distinction will come up shortly. Um, and a, a sound and valid argument uh, is probably the most classic of all. All men are mortal. Socrates is a man. Therefore, Socrates is mortal. We know all men are mortal. We know Socrates was a man. So we know Socrates is mortal. The conclusions are both true. And because the, the conclusions are true, sorry, the premises are true, and because the premises are true, the conclusion follows naturally and inescapably. 
So, why is that important? Well, firstly, I have this contention or theory or however you want to say it. Human beings are inherently logical creatures. To be human, to have a brain is to be logical. There is no way to formulate an argument without uh, invoking logic in some way. If you present me with an argument, I can turn it into a syllogism. So uh, an example I used in the conversation I had earlier was um, 2 plus 2 equals 4 because banana. Sounds kind of random. Uh, switch out banana to chimichanga and it's something that Deadpool might say. Why does 2 plus 2 equal 4? Because chimichanga, dude. Changa, whatever. But even that's an argument because the argument would go if banana, then 2 plus 2 equals 4. Second premise, banana, therefore 2 plus 2 equals 4. That's a valid argument, like we talked about earlier, but it's not a sound one because there's no relationship between fruit and mathematics. So, again, why is that important? Well, the initial conversation was about whiteness. Uh, and we also talked a little bit about gender versus sex, as are they the same words, are they different? Well, uh, I, I'm going to use the gender sex argument or discussion or whatever. Um, no one is, I don't think anyone can reasonably argue that biology is a thing and that this existential sense of self that I will refer to as the ESOS, because screw saying it every time and even more typing it every time. No one's denying that biology and ESOS are two completely separate things. So when a, sort of a radical gender theorist will say sex and gender are identical, and a more traditional gender theorist will say, no, they're not, they're actually agreeing with each other. Because the gender theorist is saying, well, I use the word gender to describe ESOS, and I use the word sex to describe biology, uh, and therefore sex and gender are two different things. And the traditional gender theorist will say, well, I use the word sex and the word gender to explain biology, and ESOS is something else entirely like uh, gender identity, therefore... They're still acknowledging that biology and ESOS are different, but because they use the same two words to describe biology, they say, no, sex and gender are the same. We're agreeing with each other, but because we're starting from different premises, if you start from the position that sex means biology and gender means ESOS, then it will be a valid argument, but not a sound argument, to say that biology and ESOS, uh, that sex and gender are the same. If you subscribe to the idea that sex and gender both mean biology and ESOS has a different word, then it's a, it's a valid argument to say that sex and gender are the same, but it's not a sound argument because it's starting from a different position. Getting a bit more rambly than I thought, um, but hopefully most of you have sort of kept up. Maybe replay and take notes, I don't know. It's only been nine minutes, and you should try an hour or two of this stuff in a lecture hall. Uh, but at the end of the day, what I... I hate that phrase. What I'm trying to get at here, though, is that no matter how messed up someone's worldview seems, they're still trying... They're still using logic. They're still arguing from some worldview that's become a premise in their argument. So what you've got to do is look past the conclusion and get to those premises to find out which one of those premises is wrong. Because the argument's probably going to be valid. It's very hard to make an invalid.